to angry wasps adds suspense to the scene. He turned again without stopping, and the horse carried him back to strike another enemy rider. By then, his people were cheering loudly. Four times the boy charged back and forth, and each time he hit one of the enemies, just as his horse had told him. Okay? So, now what I would like you to do is the next event that happened after the, the boy or the horse spoke to the boy was that the horse gives the boy instructions for battle. So I want you to go ahead and retell me the horse's instructions using sequence words. Well, the horse first said, first leave your bow and arrows behind. Second, cut a long willow stick. Next, ride me to the enemy and hit their leader with a stick. After that, ride back again. Finally, do this four times, but no more than four. And with that being said, the next sequence of events is going to be the horse gives the boy instructions for battle. The men watched the boy with amazement. Now they drove too, felt brave enough to follow his example, and they drove the enemy in full retreat from the village. It was like chasing buffalo. Now I'm gonna stop right there real quick because I wanna know how do the boy's actions affect the outcome of the battle? How does his actions affect the outcome of the battle? While the Pawnee men are encouraged to follow his lead by riding towards the enemy, and they are able to drive the enemy away. Now, the boy was eager to join the chase. He said to himself, I have struck four times and I have not been hurt. I will do it once more. And so again, he rode after the retreating enemy riders. He whipped another with a stick. But at that very instant, the horse was pierced by an arrow and fell. The horse tried to stand, but he could not. What happened after the boy rode into the battle again? Even after the horse said not to do it more than four times, he thought going one more time was good. What happened? Well, because the boy fails to follow the horse's instructions, the horse is shot by an arrow. And that's going to be our next sequence of events. The boy disobeys the horse, and the horse is shot by an arrow. Let's continue to read. Now when the enemy had fled, the men returned and gathered round the boy. His horse was dead. They wanted to touch the horse, for they knew he had been no ordinary horse, but a horse with mystic powers. The leader spoke. Today, this boy has shown that he is braver than all of us. From now on, we will call him Pariska Rezara, boy chief. But the boy cried. He was sad for the horse and angry with himself that he had not done what the mysterious horse had told him to do. He untied the lariat, pulled out the arrow, and carefully wiped away the blood. What new trait or traits does the boy show as he weeps over the dead horse? He's angry with himself, and he recognizes that he is responsible for the horse's death. This shows he is now understanding that his decision and his actions actually affect the people around him. Now he climbed to the top of a nearby hill to mourn. He sat on a rock and pulled his blanket over his head. And while he sat there crying, fearsome dark clouds closed across the sky and it grew dark as if night was falling. Lightning flashed, thunder shook the hilltop, and it rained with a terrific downpour. Looking through the downpour, he imagined he saw the dead horse move his, little, his legs a little, and then he even tried to lift his head. He wondered if something strange and wonderful was happening, and then he knew it was true. The horse slowly stretched out his front legs and then stood up. The horse spoke softly to him. Dorahat, our father above, is good. He has forgiven you. He has let me come back to you. 
The storm passed. The rain stopped. All was still and fresh, and the sun shone brilliantly on his beautiful living horse. Now take me up into the hills, far away from people, the horse told him. Leave me there for four days, and then come for me. Now, first the boy climbs the hill to mourn. While he sits crying, the sky darkens and thunderstorms begin. Then the boy believes he can see the horse move a bit. After the horse stands up, the boy runs down the hill and puts his arms around the horse. And next the horse says that he has to come back because the boy has been forgiven. And finally the horse gives the boy new instructions. So our next set of data, or next set of um, sequence of events is when the boy mourns, which means he's saddened, he's grieving over the death, the horse comes back to life and gives new instructions. When the four days had passed, Boy Chief left the village and climbed into the pine tree hills. A horse neighed and the mysterious horse appeared, followed by a herd of spirited horses. They surrounded Boy Chief, snorting and stamping excitedly. Horses of every color, beautiful bays, chestnuts, shiny blacks, whites, grays, and paints. I'm going to stop right there real quick. What happens when the boy follows the horse's new instructions? Well, he's rewarded with a herd of horses. A herd of horses. Okay? Mounted on his mysterious horse, Boy Chief drove the horses round and round the village and he stopped in front of his grandmother's shelter. Grandmother, he said, now you will always have horses. You need never walk again. Choose the ones you want and give the rest to those who need them the most. And so it was done. After that, the boy and his grandmother rode whenever they moved camp. They lived in a teepee and were not poor any longer. And just as his grandmother had looked after him when he was young, so he too always took care of her for all of those years. Now I'm going to stop right there, okay? Now, the boy was given a herd of horses after he followed the new instructions for the horse. And he promises to use the horses to take care of his grandmother and others in need. That is going to be that last sequence. So we're going to say, when he follows instructions, the boy receives a herd of horses which he will use to help others, okay? Now with that being said, what do you think the author's main purpose was in writing the story? Remember, you have the choices of to inform, to entertain, to persuade. What was the author's purpose here? Well, the author has written an entertaining story, right? But he's probably also trying to persuade us that there is wisdom in the Pawnee legend. So learning to obey leads to respect from others and self-knowledge. So I would definitely say the author's main purpose here was to persuade us. However, the author did entertain us as well. Okay, that's going to go ahead and conclude this link. Of course, if you have further questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me.